And looking at that first round matchup, I'm going to ask you about Colgate here. Okay. I'm not yeah. going to go, I'm not going to ask you for your in depth take on Colgate, <laughs> but yeah. this is the team that is going to the tournament for the fourth year in a row. They've not won a mm-hmm. tournament game ever, but seasoned guys who actually got a lot of help from their sophomores in the conference championship, mm-hmm. uh, who have been here and have played together for a long time. And you look at Baylor, they are skilled, but they are young including mm-hmm. your point guard who has never played a tournament game. And we've seen how much the team goes as he goes this year. Yeah. Does that kind of give you any pause of, is this team too young? I, I know they've gone through a gauntlet together, but yeah. are they too young? I mean, young and experienced haven't played a long time together. Like you can throw a lot of, a lot of red flags there at the end of the day, the line is 13 and a half. And I know that that's what, that's why it's called an upset. I understand that's where Cinderella's come from. I, I'm not explaining that away. It's what makes March Madness so fantastic. Like a Furman last year, uh, Princeton, uh, obviously an FDU. Like that's what we love about March. Those were all bigger spreads than 13 and a half. But what those teams had that I don't necessarily feel like at first pass, and I've watched like 10 minutes of Colgate video on on YouTube. I didn't catch a full game, um, but what those teams had is dynamic ways they can beat you right mm-hmm. colgate i haven't seen in the limited tape i've watched a guy that's going to challenge you at the rim i haven't seen guys that are going to speed baylor up offensively what colgate does well and really really well is fill up the bucket from three yeah i th- i would be very One surprised if yeah. if baylor comes out and plays a zone because that's basically daring teams to shoot I think we need to rely on our athleticism in this game, play a man, try and suffocate and pressure Colgate. And I, I'm not, I'm not concerned. <laughs> I mean, I, again, maybe I'm being too optimistic, but I'm not, this is not one of the hey, double digits that I'm circling in my hurry. bracket saying yeah. you can go and and make the upset. If we're talking McNeese, if we're talking Samford, these are, these are double digit seeds where I'm like, this is an interesting path, but I just don't see it with Colgate. Okay. So you've, you've advanced in our theoretic version theoretical mm. bracket here you have advanced Baylor past Colgate so yeah. they play the winner of the first Clemson, half might be tight though. the first half might be tight I'm serious like so if we'll you remember that, that out like that year, year that we won that year that we won the natty Hartford was only down by seven at halftime yeah and my stepbrother and who went to Hartford it. is texting me like what's up with your boys and then we won by 40 or whatever so yeah. anyway go ahead I didn't mean to interrupt but I'm not saying we'll it's gonna be a, blowout, a little bit not yeah We'll sweat it a little bit. That's that's kind of that's what we do at Baylor. We 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 are used to that by now. So yeah. looking at that second round matchup, that's Clemson and New Mexico. Mm-hmm. Now I know we're not going to go game by game here, but this fascinates me because you got on one hand the Brad Brownell thing and what he's saying about the Big Twelve, and I think Clemson's mm-hmm. a pretty solid team. And I watched a lot of New Mexico over this weekend because I loved watching that Mountain West tournament. Eddie House's Mm -hmm. son, more Celtics references. Uh, They are dangerous. In fact, they are opening as favorites as 11 seeds, as an 11 seed against Clemson the six. Who in an ideal world would you rather face in the round of 32? Look, man, I've done little to no work. Yes, or I did little to no work yesterday. I listened to a lot of college basketball podcasts mm-hmm. and jiggled my mouse and just stayed online. That's not true. Um, if my boss listens, which she doesn't. Um, everybody, I will stand on the table, bang on the pole, whatever it is. Everybody is so high on this New Mexico pick. Everyone's yeah. so high on the Mountain West. Yeah. It's like the sex. Vegas pick. is high on it. They do play their conference championships there. But the, yeah. I'm banging on, I'm banging. The committee said if they did not win their conference tournament, they were not going to be in. They were not going to receive an at-large bid. True. I'm not – That this is my thing with New Mexico, and I'm, I'm fired up because it's all I've listened to. Andy Katz picking against – all these people are picking New Mexico to upset Baylor. Clemson is good. <laughs> they are. Like, they are like, good. Like, I'm, all re- I'm ready to deploy units on the Clemson money line at plus money. Like, that's going to occur legally. Yes, but, of course. But uh, through FanDuel, great sponsor of the show. Um, But – I would rather play New Mexico because I think that they're less proven. I think Clemson is a better, I think Clemson is a worse matchup for us from a physicality standpoint. I'm off That's my a good way of putting it. I'm like, tired of the New Mexico stuff. <laughs> We've already heard enough of it. I mean, it, it yeah. is bizarre. It's an 11 seed to open up as two and a half point favorites against not only a six seed, but a six seed from the ACC. Like right. we, we'd love dumping on the ACC, but like yeah, that is, that is weird. And, and that that's kind of what I was trying to convey 
after the, the, the bracket came out of like, when I dump on Brad Brownell, it's not that Clemson isn't good. It's that the conference isn't as good as he thinks he, as right. he thinks they are. And right. Clemson with that physicality that you were talking about kind of reminds me of that Creighton team. Now I, I did, I did like Baylor Shireman probably better than anybody I like on, uh, on Clemson. But mm-hmm. it, are th- are there parallels there? I could be making this up. I haven't seen a ton of Clemson this year, but are there parallels there? The only and again, I I haven't watched a ton of Clemson tape either. Yeah, um, the the biggest parallel I see is that they like run their offense through their center. I can't even remember his name. And Cle- and uh, Creighton, and Creighton did a similar did thing, thing with Cockburner. Yeah. Um, like their center is their leading scorer, but he kind of plays more of like a point swing position. So I don't know. I'm not. I don't. I just I can't answer that in full. But hey, but you have a more athletic center now. Yeah, but the physicality that Baylor. I saw is like they really pressure who they played. Like they would play yeah. pretty tight on the perimeter, and that's like when Ray J speeds up, that's problematic. So I would rather play in New Mexico. Sue me. I, I I'm not gonna do that, Brandon. If, <laughs> if you didn't shout out FanDuel, I would have, but you did. Yeah. So I'm keeping you around. I'm not suing you. Okay, yeah. kind of can wrapping I, things up. Can right? I ask you yeah. a question? Please do. Please I know. Do. I'm not trying to take over your show. Who in the region okay, scares well, you most? Because for me, it's a team we've not yet talked about. Scares me the most. Hmm. I don't know. I still like Arizona. I, I wouldn't say I'm like shaking in my boots. I think Mississippi State could go on a run. Uh, and again, going to that Mountain West, I wouldn't love to play Nevada. Mm. Is is one. I'm not scared of it, but I wouldn't love that matchup. Are you looking at uh cuz we have mentioned all but like one or two teams here. Are you are you picking a 12 over 5 in this region? I'm not. St. Mary's terrifies. Okay, me. you you like St. Mary's. Okay. St. Mary's terrifies me. They, I knew it was going to be whoever that game was. Yeah, the pace is crazy. Like they play so methodical. They suck the air out of the basketball. They are the like quite literal antithesis of what Baylor plays like and I just think mm-hmm. we would be in an absolute blender if we had to play them. So I would love to see that would Canyon. Be eight, that. I think. Yeah. I think yeah. Be so they would, so they would have to that. kind of run that top half of the region, but I really hope we don't have to play St. Mary's. I think they're a very talented team. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the team that scares me the most from a matchup and style of play standpoint. Like if you go roster by roster, like top six or seven guys, like we said with UNC Arizona, and I think we match up well, but the, the true dichotomy of St. Mary's style versus our style is what gives me pause. Yeah, I guess the only other one that I would have said tough matchup is Michigan State, just based off the first game. But I don't mm-hmm. think they're making the Elite Eight. I don't. I don't think so either. And Did if you they see do, this? Will be a great clip. Yeah, that will be. Yeah, clip it. Did you see the uh, the end of the Grand Canyon game? Uh, in their conference tournament where the guy did the windmill dunk up 12 with like 20 seconds left and it the opponent him. inbounded the ball, but like threw it at the guy. Dodge did you see all that? Them? Yeah. That was crazy. That, that was, was crazy. excellent for was guys who, for, for short guys who would get really angry and pick up basketball. I felt <laughs> seen there. That's I felt it. really seen. All right, That's Brandon, good. one more question before we get yeah. you out of here. And we, we did this in last year's show when we were previewing mm-hmm. the 23 tournament. And I will probably have you on if they were advances past this weekend, hoping to have yeah. you on before uh, the end of their run. How far can this Baylor team go? So I have one bracket that I've created called Baylor Bias, and I have us winning it all. And in the last article I wrote, I said, This is our ceiling. So, can I think we can? I think we've seen so much parody outside of UConn in this year's NCAA tournament or excuse me, in this year's like uh, college basketball season. Um, and even UConn took kind of a thrashing against Creighton. Um, so we've seen a lot of parody yeah. this year. So I think we can win a national championship. I'm not this, the Baylor is not a team that I scratch off and I'm like, I don't see a path, but like a realistic thing, I think we can make a, a run at an elite eight. And then from there, anything can happen. I think we, I think we yeah, will, yeah. I think we will, we will win three games in this tournament for sure. And then from there, anything can happen. Which is what we need, man. We just need to get to that second weekend for us fans. That's that's going to help a lot for the banter people online. Daddy yeah. Brackets, Brandon McKinnon. There he is. Thanks, Has man. Baylor going all the way. And if that is the case, we will have games next week. So I will have you on next week. Brandon, yep. thank you so much for joining once again. Appreciate it, man. Have a good one.